three, two, one. Hanging at PIA with Norman Kent. Eat your heart out. Norman Kent, uh, it's good to see you here at PIA. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. So what's going on here? Well, you know, I think this is a, a great place to see everybody and meet with everybody. It's one of the wonderful things about the sport. We get to, whether it's in a boogie or in a place like this, you get to see people that you've had for a long time, you know, met with for years and years and years, and, and uh, also new people you get to meet. And uh, right now I'm working on a little documentary, and we're um, trying to portray the sport uh, as a professional bunch of people, you know, rather than uh, the image that sometimes we can we can have, which is a, a little bit lower than that. And and this is a great opportunity because we just look so professional, and we are so professional, and this is awesome. We? Well, we the sport. What do you mean, we? <laughs> I see you got your hair cut. Have you uh, given up drugs? No, no. Well, well you know, I, you know a, of course. Uh, For the I record, Norman grow, doesn't use drugs. I just can't grow it anymore. You know? <laughs> when it went white, I, it also kind of went away. You know, so yeah. I turned 50 this last year, so I'm celebrating uh, that. Happy 50th. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. I'm, I'm having a good time. I don't feel 50. No, you don't look 50. I, I feel awesome. I, I have a feeling that I feel older than you look. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> So, so what's going on in your life? What you been up to lately? Well, you know, I've, uh, I always do clients. You know, I have a lot of clients that uh, come and go over the years. And, and uh, I'm just so passionate about my photography, as you already know. And so I try to attend as many boogies or, or even do my own little experiments and stuff because I just love it. And um, we're looking at possibly releasing a new book this coming year. Wonderful. Because uh, since my last book, there's been a, a lot of years and my photography has matured quite a bit. So uh, we were looking at the material and we realized that uh, there's a lot there. We, we didn't shoot it with that intention, but that, that's one of the ideas to possibly release that. And, and as always, it's just it's the kind of sport you just can't get away from. You know, I just love it. I, it's the same way I was drawn to it from the beginning because uh, I just, like I said, I, I don't know if you know the story, but I was going to try it only once. And I'm sure everybody shares that same story. And I just got completely hooked. And I am still hooked. I can't get away from it. I love it. And my photography is the same. So I'm just doing it for the fun of it. I got to ask, about how many skydives do you think you got? Well, you know, I don't keep individual track of them. I keep them by the bunch. So it's a sort of a round number. It's coming up on around 19,000 at this point. And it still feels like the first one. It does. You know, and it's always, for me, I think, you know, I have to tell you a little secret here. I don't know if it's something to be shared with skydivers, but I'm going to share it anyway because I don't care. <laughs> and what it is is that when I'm training, like for free flying or something like that, I am awful. I'm an awful student, an awful flyer. I really don't do so well. But when I'm shooting, I fly so well. You know what I mean? And I think what that is to me is that the more you think about what you're doing, like the flying itself or something, the more you're too locked into that. But when you think of it as a vehicle to get you to do something else, then it just becomes so natural. And that's what I enjoy about this. You know, it's, To me, it's like I see a shot, I see, I see it in a certain place, and I just go, oh, i got to go there. And, and at a certain speed, at a certain angle, and your body just takes you there. And so I just feel like I could just go there. But when I'm thinking, well, I go on a train, so when I want to do that, I want to go from here to there, and then I can't do it. You know, so it's all, to me, it's all revolving around the photography because that's how I get to do my best. I just let the images come, and then the rest of it just follows. And that's one of the things I love about this, that it's just so automatic like that. And I think uh, everybody has the same story that, that does anything with a sport. They just do it. You know? and well, I, I it carries it. through. You've got this incredible childlike enthusiasm. <laughs> it's, it's infectious. Whenever I'm around you, I feel that. And well, it, thank it's, you. It's wonderful. Um, you know, I, you, as you know, I'm, I'm a fairly young camera flyer. I've just you know, got sub 500 jumps and, and trying to become uh, as good as I can. What kind of advice would you give to a new camera flyer like me? Well, I think one of the things is the same thing that I was saying earlier. The passion for the photography, I think I would put ahead of the actual flying or the technique. A lot of people are looking for an answer on how to, a technique to do something the easiest way. And they're missing out on the opportunity to invent that, to reinvent the wheel for themselves, even if there's a wheel you can purchase. You know what I mean? That is part of it. You know, I design my own suits, I design my own helmets, I design my own stuff, but it's for the pleasure of it. It's to be in communication and in contact with every single part of the photography, so you then you're just that much smoother and that much better. So I'd say, rather than looking for a shortcut and an answer somewhere else as to what you can uh, just do like somebody else or, or copy from somebody else, just go and invent it. It's just part of the fun. And I think that's one of the things that I, could, I would do, is take the photography, do it with passion, 
take the skydiving, do it with passion, and then go play, go experiment. And also, take a look, one other thing, take a look at how beautiful you can be and how many images you can get when you think you missed. Because a lot of the images come that way. You go after one thing and you think you missed, and there's some beautiful stuff there, and if you don't pay attention, you might not look at them as beautiful, uh, and you might even throw them away or push that delete button. I used to do that a lot. <laughs> and then later on, you know, you come back and look at them and you see how great they are. So a lot of times, you set your goals to go to shoot something, and you really, what you get is what the beauty of it is, regardless of what the goals were. Because sometimes the goals can be too high, and they're only a vehicle for what you're actually going to go get. Excellent advice and great words. You heard it here from the, the master, Norman Kent. Norman, excellent to see you again, as always. Thanks Same for here. taking a few minutes. My pleasure. Bye now. All right.